Hey, what's going on, YouTube? It's your man Soul here. Welcome back to the channel. You know what it is when you clicked it. Today, we are going to be going over the pre raid best in slot gear for the Blood DK and Wrath of the Lich King Classic. Um, if you don't know, Wowhead has updated, I think, like 90% of their their classes to match the Death Knight. So you're going to see pre raid phase one bits, all of the strengths, weaknesses, anything you really want to know about your particular class. I think Wowhead has updated their, their uh, classes on. So obviously, because I'm maining Death Knight, I want to cover DKs. Um, but before we get to the video, if you like what you see at the end of the video, please consider liking and subscribing. It's going to help the channel grow out definitely. And as we make it down the long road to 1K, you can definitely contribute to that. And I would greatly appreciate it. But without further ado, let's jump on in. All right, all right, all right. Let's begin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each armor slot and we're going to talk about the options and the bits and all that stuff. And the TODR for this video is if you really just want to go through Wowhead or you want to go through whatever website you like and just pick each best item and decide that I'm going to get each each best item. That's the TLDR. Go ahead. Do you think no one's going to bat an eye? You'll be fine. I do feel like most of these items do require just a little bit of uh, extra talking points, just a little bit more nuance. And that's what are really what I'm here for. So that's what we're going to do through the video. But again, like I said, if you just want to go through and pick each best, um, each, each best listed item and say, that's what I'm going to use. That's, you could do that that's fine but let's begin so for the helm slot we have four options we got the tempered titan steel helm made by blacksmithing so boe so you can buy this off the ah we have the armor titanium goggles made by engineering we have the arcane shielded helm from the nexus and the ground trimmer helm from Gundrak. so just talk about the blues real quick both of these are really good um the arcane shielded helm is avoidance based has dodge has defense has a defense socket with a blue socket so you're gonna get that socket bonus regardless because you're gonna be jamming stamina and has it's just really good really good avoidance piece the ground trimmer helm has a red socket with a 12 stamina uh, socket bonus which you could get if you really want um doesn't have avoidance but it has hit hit is important because obviously you want your spells to land to keep threat you know to make sure your death strikes are hitting for heals so that's also important so i would say you can't go wrong with either of these um if you feel like you're really really squishy get the arcane shielded helm it'll go a little bit further um but the ground trim helm is good also so and the nexus and gun are pretty easy probably going to get the arcane shielded helm first because the nexus is probably the dungeon that you're going to start to farm especially early on so that's probably when you're going to see first but as far as the purples go the titanium steel helm it has the highest stamina out of the you no know, the phase one helms right 161 uh, 162 my bad stamina versus 111 so that's a lot of stamina it doesn't have any avoidance stats on it, it doesn't have hit doesn't have expertise on it either um it does have a blue socket with plus defense so you're going to get that extra defense going up to 54 but that's really it so if you can get defense cap or crit immunity really without this helm, then the stats are really kind of wasted. I don't think you're getting it for the stamina, but the stamina is probably good enough. Now looking at the titanium goggles, this has defense and expertise. And the defense rating on this is higher than the defense on this, even with the socket bonus so you're making out there has lower stamina has about 51 less stamina but it has that expertise rating and expertise is especially important for death knights because if your death strike gets parried you can't heal and you're probably going to die if you get enough of bad string of of parries and dodges so expertise is really important it it literally can you know make or break our quote unquote active mitigation because our healing is part of our active mitigation so be mindful of that me personally i'm probably going to opt to get the titanium goggles over the temper hill uh titan still home one because i'm going to be an engineer um and two because even though i could i they're going to be blacksmiths in my guilds that i can get the mask for to make this i think the first thing i'm going to do is make the titanium goggles that's just going to be the first move whether or not i just use them over the titan still helm all the time that's debatable because this is a lot of stamina that you know, it's a big stamina increase so Arguably speaking, I'm probably going to have both, but my first move is to get the titanium goggles. But you can't go wrong with either. If you just want to go and make a beeline for the titanium steel helm, go right ahead. No one's going to, you know, call you wrong. Moving on down, we have the shoulders. We have 
uh, Wapox Spaulders of Solidarity listed as best. They are World Drop. We have the Iron Dwarf Smith Pauldrons from Halls of Lightning, and we have the Crusader Square Pauldrons from another World Drop. Now, the thing with these World Drop ones is these two, the, the Crusader Square Pauldrons and the Spaulders of Solidarity, are probably going to be expensive, especially these purples, right? So, what I would say to you is while the Spaulders of Sol Solidarity are really, really good, defense and expertise are amazing, right? Gets you to crit immunity and allows you to not be uh, dodged or parried as much. My issue is that the shoulder slot isn't really that hard to get BIS for, right? Because, like, if we go, hold on, if we go to the BIS list for Death Knights, the, here it is, the shoulder slot, the best slot is the shoulders from a new Rakan. New Rakan, you're gonna kill a lot of times, right? So you're gonna see the pauldrons of unnatural death. So there's really no reason to break your bank buying some crazy world drops when you can go right to a new Rakan and get your best and call it a day, right? So that's my only thing with, you know, dumping a large amount of gold on world drop purples. And obviously, as you can see from the best list, you have other options. You have the tear shoulders and you have abomination shoulder blades uh also from patchwork which is probably another boss you're gonna kill fairly easily so that's my only thing but just generally speaking in phase one purposes the uh for pre-raid spoilers of solidarity are the best ones you get before you you go into next um now obviously because these are world drops you're probably gonna have the iron dwarfs uh smith pauldrons first and they come with defense and parry have um, a little bit more stamina than the Crusader uh, Square Pauldrons, but this one has parry versus dodge. And the thing about parry is that you'll hit parry cap faster than you would uh, dodge cap. And that can be dangerous because of the way parry hasting works. And even though we don't know which boss, which bosses will parry haste in Wrath Classic, if the list is the same as original Wrath, then we kind of know, but just assuming that we don't, you don't want bosses to be parry hasting. We'll talk about more parry hasting when we get to the weapon section, but you don't want, you know, the bosses to parry you, then hit you with a quick, extra quick fast on the next auto attack. So, yeah, just be careful with your parry levels, but these aren't bad shoulders. But if you're just, you know, being objective, these are the best shoulders before you get into raids. Next things next, we got back piece. So we have the durable Nurup Hide cape made from leather working. It's also a BOE, so you can buy this. We have the Cloak of the Enemy from the Commander Stoutbeard and the Nexus. And we have the Cloak of Peaceful Resolutions from Wormrest Accord Reputation Vendor. So, it goes without saying that the Nurub Hide uh, Cape is the best cloak, hands down. If you can get your hands on it, get your hands on it. Like, I would I would strive to get this because it has dodge, has expertise. Expertise is a really good stat for a cloak slot because it frees up other... Uh, important slots to where you can put different stats into it like expertise on a cloak slot is really really good you don't really want expertise on like heavy statted uh, other options like chests or legs or anything that's just my opinion but I think even though this is a crafted BOE and it's probably going to run you some gold if you're not a leather worker you should really aim to get this if you are absolutely against dumping gold in, uh, in pre-raid which I can understand um, cloak of the enemy and the Cloak of Peaceful Resolutions isn't bad. Um, it just depends on, like, both of these are gonna be pretty accessible, so I won't say that you'll have one before the other. Like, you probably, like, you could just get lucky and just have this drop the first time you do Nexus, so you might get this one first. Both of them are pretty equal. They both have defense, they both have hit. Like, yeah, this, these, these are pretty equal, but the best one really for pre-raid is the Nurub Hide. Um, that being said, like, we can just check real quick for pre-raid uh, Cloak. So. The Cloak of the Shadow Sun is a trash drop from, from Nax. This is what's considered your abyss. It just has a high, uh, high amount of armor, has defense, has dodge. So instead of that, that uh, parry and the Platinum Mesh Cloak is really good. So again, 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 even though I think the Nurub Hide Cape is the best for pre-raid, if you don't want to drop a ton of gold because you know you can get your best cloak fairly easily because platinum mesh cloak is an emblem cost and this is a trash drop you can do trash farms and, and get this right so so yeah don't worry about spending too too much gold even even the gale proof cloak is pretty good too like again defense dodge expertise expertise is a really good stat for a cloak slot so any one of your uh, uh, optional bis items will work 
so think about that before you drop a lot of gold trying to get this cape. but it is a really really good cape um if you just want to be as strong as you can from rip this is a really good option and you should get it moving on down we got the chest so we got four options we got the hero scourge born chest guard which is the tier chest comes from emblems we got the sun emblazoned chest plate from the halls of stone the breastplate of the solemn council from wormers accord rep and we have the ziggurat imprinted chest guard from dtk or drag Theron keep so a lot of these cloaks are pretty close like even says here all the all the uh chest lists are close in value um the tier chest is obviously the best uh, because it has the, the extra socket on it, so more flexibility. Flexibility is really good when you in terms of tanking. So this is probably the one that you're aiming for. It only costs emblems, so you're going to be farming emblems anyway. Before you get this one, uh, you're going to be looking at these three. And what I would say is probably go for the bre bless bleh, ugh, <laughs> the breastplate of Solemn Council from the Worm Mercer Cord Rep because it has expertise on it. Um, now, the Sun Emblazoned chest plate has hit on it, which is also important, and it has a socket on it, so you can kind of net more stamina from it if you feel like you're a little bit squishy. Um, however, you can get hit elsewhere in other slots, and I feel like expertise, again, just for making sure your your death strikes don't get dodged or parried is really really important obviously without hit your death strike can miss too but again like i said you can get expertise elsewhere you can get hit elsewhere either but me personally me personally i would say the breastplate of solid council is slightly better my opinion however you're probably going to have the sun and blazing chest plate first because it comes from a dungeon as opposed to buying it from revered rep and you just farm this dungeon every day so it has a socket on it, so it's not bad but yeah these are pretty close in value um Pick which blue you want and then farm your emblems of heroes and then go buy the chest card. Easy. Next, we got bracers. We got the braces of the herald. We got bindings of dark will. We got Savala's bloodied shackles and the bracers of reverence. So, oh, I didn't say where that came from. Bracers of the herald come from Ankahet. Yo, I just want to say right now, mad shit comes from Ankahet. Be prepared to live in there as a blood decay. Um, the bindings of dark will come from Culling of Strath. Savala's Bloody Shackles comes from Art Guard Pinnacle. Braces of Reverence comes from the Oculus, um, which you're probably going to be doing a lot of too. So, the Braces of the Herald are cl the clear best winner out of these. Um, has the most stamina. Has uh, defense, has parry. Again, be careful with that parry, but again, it's on a Bracer slot. It's not that much parry. You should be fine. It comes from Ankahet, which you're going to be going to anyway. So, there's really no reason not to have these after a while. Like, unless you just get incredibly unlucky, you're going to have these bracers. That's really the, the cut and dry of it. So, moving on. Hands of... Oh, hands of the blood. I was literally about to read that. Anyway, the hand pieces or gloves, whatever you want to call them, gauntlets. We got a couple options here. So, we have the Hero Scourge Born Hand Guards, which is the tier chest from Emblems. We got Fire Proven Gauntlets from the Corinator Rep, which is Exalted in order to buy them you got the horn tip gauntlets from gundrak and you got gauntlets of the water revenant from violet hold so a lot of good options here you got three listed as your best for your pre-rate um obviously the tier stands out because you want to get to that four set you want to make sure uh, you're, you have that icebound fortitude four set and they have a socket on them and oops my bad they have defense dodge and hit three things you love right However, on your way up to getting these, you're going to be looking at getting one of these. Now, you're probably going to be able to get the horn tip gauntlets before you get the fire proven gauntlets, right? Um, now, the fire proven gauntlets have avoidance on it, so you're going to be taking a little bit less damage because of that dodge. But the horn tip gauntlets have expertise on it, and you guys, like I said, you know how I feel about expertise. Once you get that expertise soft cap, they won't matter too, too much. But before that, these are really important. So you kind of have to gauge where you're at with your gear. If you need the expertise, go farm gun track. If you don't, the fire proven gauntlets have avoidance on them and they're going to go a long way. Ultimately, you should be working up towards your, your scourge of one hand guards though. Moving on down, we got the waist. We got the waist guard of the living iron. Another uh, emblem cost item. We have the ancient aligned girdle comes from Azuna Rube and we have the waist guard of the risen knight, which is a world drop. So, the Waste Guard of Living Iron has Defense, Dodge, and Parry, a lot of avoidance on it. Lots and lots of avoidance has a stock of bonus on it as well. So, this is a really good piece. 
um, just for survivability. Just a really good item. Um, has a socket on it. Has the stats that you want. Again, just be careful of your parry levels and your dodge levels. But other than that, just a really good belt. Um, and you can buy it, right? The Ancient Aligned Girdle has defense and dodge with no socket on it. Again, you're probably going to be able to get this one before you get the waste card of the Living Iron because this is an emblem cost. This is, just comes from a Zuno Rube. So you'll probably see this one before you see this one. But you should be working your way to get the Living Iron Belt. It's just better than these two. Um, one thing I will say about the belt is I think, oh yeah, they already have it up here. If you're reading my screen, they already have it up here. Watch for your, your diminishing return on your parry. If your parry is already high, go for something else. If your parry is high, honestly, get the get the ancient aligned girdle. But again, I can't tell you what your parry is gonna be. You're gonna have to figure that out on your own, my guy and girls, if you're out there. Moving on, we have the legs for the Death Knight, and we have the bolstered leg plates. We got leg guardians, leggards, and we have leg plates of the infinite draconoid. So the bolstered leg plates, these don't have avoidance on them, which is kind of what you want for a, in my opinion, for a leg, uh, leg slot because legs, chest, shoulders, and helms tend to have a lot of stat value. Like they, they tend to have a lot more stats. Now, it does have a lot of defense and it has hit rating on it and it has a socket on it. So a lot of, a lot of good things going for it and it has a, a lot of stamina, like a lot of stamina so these aren't bad in the slightest but you just got to be careful on on your avoidance so but to be fair the stamina would make up for it and the hit rating is also very important and this hit is not bad on alexa in my opinion so these are really good now looking at the leg uh, the leg guardians leggards these also have defense and hit with a socket on it. So these are like the precursor to the bolstered leggards. So these come from the Oculus, which you're, you're going to be doing anyway. So you're probably going to see these. <clears throat> and then we have the leg plates of the infinite uh, Draconoid. Now these have defense and dodge on it with no socket. Um, the dodge on it, I don't think is like when you compare the, the two blues, like there is very, very minimal. Um, these have a socket on it. So the extra stamina just might benefit you more than the the dodge even though it's 55 dodge is a lot of dodge but i think that's just damn like in this case wins it for me in my opinion plus you can socket it for even more so there we go moving on to the feet so we have temper titan steel treads from blacksmithing as well it's a boe that you can also buy we have the sabatons of the draconic vigor comes from revered from the wormless accord and we have the breeze of ancient evil from anka at the old temple so Temper Titan still uh, treads have crazy amounts of stamina, 120 compared to the next best one, 85 compared to the other one, 87. So that's a lot of stamina to um, be missing out on. Now we don't have defense or hit or expertise on these, but at that point you have so much more stamina than these two that it kind of doesn't matter. And I know, I know, like you might think, but Soul on the helm section you said that. The Titan, uh, the Tempered Titan Steel Helm has a lot of stamina, but you're going to get the Titan, the, 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 the Titanium Goggles. I said that, yes. That's because of expertise. It's different. Um, because these next two boots, like this has hit on it, which hit is important, but if you don't really like need the hit, like hit and expertise are going to run its course. At some point, you're not going to need hit and expertise anymore. So... Once you reach that level, hit becomes useless, expertise becomes meh, and you start to look for other things like stamina and, and, and flat defense and armor values and all that other good shit. So that's why I think the Titan uh, Titan Steel Treads are really good, especially for boots. I think this is the one you're going to go for. Now, these are crafted BOE, so if you're not a blacksmith, you're going to have to buy them or get the items to make them. And that's where I would start looking at what your best list is. So we're going to compare and scroll down on to the, to the good old feet here. So we got the Sabatons of Endurance from Thaddeus, we got Kaizox Ground Stompers from Emblem of Valor, and we got the Plague Impervious Boots from Knock the Plague Ringer. So the best ones, the Sabatons of Endurance comes from Thaddeus. Thaddeus isn't a difficult fight, but you may not see these for a little bit, right? Because he's like further into the, uh, the raid. Like, I can't say he's further in. I don't know which quarter or which wing you're going to start at so if you happen to start at the uh, construct quarter where he's at 
then you might see them. If you don't start there, then you know you won't see them as often. So keep that in mind before you drop a lot of gold on on crafting something. But if you're not starting at Daddy's, I would say that probably is a better reason to go get those uh Titan Steel Treads crafted because those are going to give you the best survivability before you get to Daddy's, right? So and then if you look at the other one, so the ground stompers come from Emblems of Valor. They're gonna have Emblems of Valor, so you can also look at it like that. You can look at your Titan Steel Treads as a precursor before you have 60 emblems, right? Um, the Plague Impervious Boots come from Nax 10 from Not the Plague Ringer. You're probably gonna see these a lot, to be quite honest. You're gonna see these a lot. Not this is a pretty easy fight. So just gauge it. Gauge it for yourself. Depending on your pathing that your raid group takes, depending on what you have available to you, your resources will fuel your decision there. Moving on, get into some of the fun stuff here. So we got jewelry. We got the chain military gorget from Emblems of Heroism. We have the titanium earth guard chain from Jewel Craft and Crafted BOE, so you can purchase this. We have the Shadow Seeker pendant from Ankahet, and we have the pendant of the Nathazim from the Kalinka Strath. So, I think by and large, <clears throat> the military gorget is better than these. The Earth Guard chain is better in terms of raw stamina because you could gem that for stamina and have more stam than the chain military gorget. But the military gorget has dodge and hit on it. Those are pretty high value stats on a next slot. Like, so that's that's why I think the military gorget is pretty pretty much better than these these options, right? But if you want more raw stamina, go right ahead. And you can you don't have to gem the stamina. You can put whatever stat you want in it. But I think when it comes to just like face value, military gorget is better. I'm looking at the blues options, so we have the Shadow Seekers pendant and we have the pendant of the Nathazine. I'll probably say the Shadow Seekers pendant is better. Um, you want to keep your parry, parry levels a little bit low, and a lot of items that we've scrolled down have had parry on them, so I would just opt for the Shadow Seekers pendant, and lo and behold, it comes from Angahet, which you're going there anyway, so you might as well just look out for this, this item anyway. Moving on down, we got rings. So we got the Titanium Earth Guard Ring made by Jewel Crafting BOE. We got Keystone Great Ring from Drakdown Keep. Band of Torture from the Oculus. The Nerubian Shield Ring from Ankahet. Woeful Band from Halls of Stone. And the Dragonfight Great Ring also from the Oculus. So the Titanium Earth Guard Ring is really good. I think this is the best ring. Like you definitely wanna wanna, wanna get this. Because it's BOE, um, you should be able to get it even if you're not Jewel Crafting, even though you really, really should be Jewel Crafting. Um, before you drop some gold on it, again, make sure you compare, contrast with your your abyss list, right? So if we go to the abyss list, look at some jewelry, look at some rings and things. So as we can see, the titanium ring is listed as one of your options, so that makes it really, really good. Your abyss is considered the emblem of valor ring, the signet of impreg impregnable fortress. Um, then we have the gatekeeper from Saffron, and we have the sand worn band from the zone drop, trash drop in Nax Ramus. So that being said, if you make the Titanium Earth Guard Ring, you're already in the runnings for your abyss list. So you, that's, that's a double win right there. Easy, easy peasy. And then you can decide from there which other ring you want to get. So I think it's just worth making the Titanium Earth Guard Ring. Before, I don't even have to look at all of these. All these are really good, but I think it's just worth it making the Earth Guard Ring. In terms of your second ring for pre-raid abyss, so the Keystone Great Ring is really good. It just has dodge on it, so... You would have to gauge if you really need a ring with defense on it, right? If you need that defense to get to crit immune, then you would have to pick a different option. And that being said, probably out of these four rings, the best option is probably going to be the Dragonflight Great Ring, only because it has hit on it too. Now, 38 defense might not be enough defense for you to warrant it, but it's better than the Band of Torture from the from also from the Oculus. Um, the the Rubian Shield Ring is really good. But again, the Dragonfly Great Ring has more defense and has it on it. So I think the best ring for a blue slot, if you um, if you need that that defense, is the Dragonfly Great Ring. If you don't, then obviously go to DTK and get this. All right, moving on to the trinkets. So we got a couple things here. So we got the figurine monarch crab from jc crafting which is bop so you cannot buy this you have to be a jc to get this we got the figurine ruby hair which is also a jc bop crafted item we have the vaunted essence of gossamer from hadronax in azun rube 
We got the Valor Medal of the First War from Emblems, the Seal of the Pantheon from Halls of Lightning, and the Sonic Booster made by Engineering. It's a BOE, but you need to be an engineer to use it. So I'm just gonna eliminate the Sonic Booster off rip unless you really just don't have anything, right? Because it's 81 stamina and the, the proc effect just gives you attack power. It doesn't really do anything for your defense. So I'm going to eliminate that one. If you really need it, go ahead, grab it. You're probably going to be an engineer anyway. So by all means, do your thing. Now, the other ones. Now, in my trinkets video, in my phase one trinkets video, I talked about the, fig uh, the figurine monarch crab. I talked about the essence of gossamer. These two trinkets are really, really good. To be quite honest, in my opinion, if you got the figurine crab and you got the essence of gossamer, you'd be in a perfect spot. So much so that in my opinion, if you got those two items and you didn't get another item in a trinket slot for the rest of phase one and you went to old war with those two trinkets, you'd be fine. That's how powerful I think those trinkets are. But now let's take a look and see what they do. So the Monarch Crab, 63 stamina with two sockets in them and has an on use dodge rating proc on a one minute cooldown so you can use this a lot of times during a fight and because dodge has lower drs than parry it's a really good avoidance piece next we have the figurine ruby hair which is also a flat 62 stamina double socket but this on use gives you increased movement speed for six uh, seconds now sometimes getting out of something and avoiding damage is better than trying to avoid it through other means like you know increasing your stats the only issue I have with the Ruby hair is that its defense is like a pseudo defense. Like if you can't move to avoid something, then the movement speed doesn't really do anything for you. Like I think like think like a fight like Thaddeus or Patchwork, the movement speed doesn't really do much for you, right? But a fight like Hygen or a fight like Gluth, this is a really good trinket. Because if you're on ad duty, that is on Gluth. Like if you're on ad duty and you have to round up the ads, yeah, this is a really good trinket. If you're on and you're doing a safety dance and you want to make sure you're in position quick this is a good trinket the issue i have with it is that it's a long cooldown it's a three minute cooldown so you probably only get a chance to use this twice and chances are you're saving that sprint for something specific so you might only get a chance to use it once but it's not a bad trinket i don't know if i would say it's best best but it's a good trinket i'd probably say essence of gossamer is a little bit better than this one but both of these are really really good um, Essence of Gossamer, you guys know how I feel about this. It's just a flat 111 stamina, and it reduces um, damage that you take from each attack by 140. Really, really good. Can't can't be mad at this. The Valor Medal of the First War is a really good trinket if you are not a JC, which you should be. But if you're not a JC and you can't make the Monarch Crab or the Ruby Hair, this is basically what the Monarch Crab does. It doesn't have the stamina on it. It has a flat uh, dodge equip effect. But it also gives you dodge on use a little bit more than the monarch crab but on a two minute cooldown instead of a one minute cooldown so this is this is like the the adjacent version of the monarch crab right the seal of the pantheon is a really good trinket too so it has defense on it and defense is a stat that's okay in the trinket slot right because that's where you like because we're not in tbc anymore so we don't need threat trinkets really like unless you're trying to parse for damage as a tank you don't really need threat trinkets so defense rating on a trinket slot is really really good plus it increases your armor by a lot for 20 seconds and armor for a death knight is just dr like we don't have shields we're not we don't have bear form so increasing our armor is just really really good to reduce physical damage taken all right whoops there we go moving on we get to the weapon so if you're a two-handed boy the titan steel destroyer they say it's the clear winner. Let's take a look. So we got Titan Just Steel Destroyer made by Blacksmith. It's BOE, so you can buy this as well. We got the Saliva. 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 Saliva Corroded Spike. I'm going to say Saliva. Saliva Corroded Spike from Violet Hold. Sword of Justice from Halls of Stone. And the Edge of Oblivion from Anka Head. I told you Matt shit comes from Anka Head. Um, so out of these four, the Titan Steel Destroyer is really good. But again, I got to caution you about buying one. Um, it doesn't have the highest amount of stamina, but it does have a lot of damage on it. Um, but again, before you buy it, let's think about where our best weapons come from. Right. And if you're going to two heal or if you're going to two hand or dual wield, um, the best two hander comes from, if I know off the top of my head, I'm pretty sure it's a trash drop. It's a trash drop from Nax. 
let's see yeah yep inevitable defeat zone drop next um if you're a pvp you can get you know one of the deadly gladiator weapons do your thing um i'm not much of a pvp -er, or i'm not going to be on um, my death knight maybe i will who knows but i'm probably not going to get this weapon so i'm going to be looking for inevitable defeat which is a trash drop right and like i said before you could do trash runs your only other real option for two-handed like strong ones is the betrayal of humanity and death spite from 10 man X. I don't know why they don't have it listed as an option but death spite is from let me just type it out real quick see if it comes up there it is there it is death spite yeah death spite 101 strength 114 stam crit and hit versus inevitable defeat which is a lot of it has strength agility stamina and expertise so yeah this doesn't really compare like that spike doesn't really compare to that one. Um, Betray of Humanity just has agility and stamina on it. it. Does have attack power, crit and haste. So yeah, like that spike and Betray of Humanity are just really options. You're really looking for inevitable defeat. Um, because it's a zone drop, you you have to gauge that. If you're going to be doing trash runs, if you're going to be participating in trash runs, um, then yeah, you can probably get inevitable defeat pretty easily. Um, if your raid doesn't have a lot of two-handed plate wares or two-handed uh just strength users that compete with you for inevitable defeat then that's another thing but again if you just want to be strong off the rip be at your strongest off the rip the titan steel destroyer is the quote unquote i guess best weapon um if you don't want to drop some gold and you want to you know explore other options before you get to nax in my opinion if you are a human you should go for the sword of justice it it's a sword it has a decent amount of stamina has a socket on it so you can get even more stamina you'll get a little bit of extra expertise just because you're a human um if you are not a human or you just don't like halls of stone and you want to do violet hold you're a masochist number one i hate the violet hold but it is a very fast clear so the saliva corroded spike might be the better option has more stamina doesn't have a socket on it and it has crit on it which you really don't care about but it does have more stamina on it um you don't gain expertise from it you know there's not an axe it's not a sword it's not a mace but it does have a lot of stamina on it has more stamina on it than the sword of justice even when you take into account the the gem but it's a pole on right um the edge of oblivion is an option too it has haste on it which i guess you can consider a little bit more useful than the crit it's an axe though so you lose out on your racial if you are human um keep in mind though with that with that racial stuff i just want to i guess we could talk about it here since i'm bringing it up so much the human ratios is really good but it's only really good in the beginning right because a lot of the latter phase weapons that we're going to be using aren't swords or maces you don't really get that effect from from later on but early sure you can definitely take into account as your as your uh gearing up like having expertise is great so if you're looking at uh these three i would probably say the sword of justice if you're human if you're not or if you just don't care the karate spike is really good moving on down to the one-handers so one-handed weapons the red sword of courage from a guard pinnacle the titan steel bone crusher from blacksmithing boe so you can buy this as well Cloud Strider's War Axe from the Oculus and the Infantry Assault Blade from Utgard Keep. Now, me personally, I would love to dual wield the Red uh, Sword of Courage, right? That's going to be kind of one of one of my aims before I get to Nax. Or probably not, I probably won't get two before I get to Nax, but that's going to be one of my things before I get Inevitable Defeat, is I want to dual wield one of the uh, dual these pups. Because they have defense, they have hit, they're going to total up to about 116 stamina. So, decent amount of stamina you're gonna get a decent amount of hit decent amount of defense so from the weapon slot which is a pretty those are pretty good stat uh stat distributions for a weapon slot now and because i'm kind of planning on being human i'm toying around with the idea of being an idol for the extra avoidance but i'm kind of planning on being human so i'll have the extra uh expertise as well from having the swords and i just think they look cool i think the red sword of coverage is really really good now if you can't get to or you don't want to be like me and spend a lot of your time in Utgard Keep, you can get the Bone Crusher, the Titan Steel Bone Crusher. Now, this is going to cost you some, some money. It does have expertise on it. It doesn't have strength or agility on it, but it does have, you know, a decent amount of stamina. It is a main hand 
uh, weapon though so you can't dual wield this you have to have this one in a different weapon so it is a main hand weapon but it does have expertise on it which you have to factor in right and it does have attack power on it so pretty good pretty good item depending on what you need now if you don't want to farm a guard pinnacle and you don't want to buy the bone crusher uh mace you can get one of these <clears throat> both of them have the same stats on them you know they both have 49 stamina 33 defense and 19 expertise they're just different weapons that's all <clears throat> if you are a human i think you just go for the assault blade why have less expertise when you can have more that's just my my thinking and since they come from Utgar Keep anyway, you might as well swing up to Utgar Pinnacle and try to get a red sword of coverage if you plan on dual wielding as a as a blood DK. That's just my thing. You can knock out two birds one stone. You can hit Utgar Keep and then go right up to Utgar Pinnacle and try to get this puppy. If you're not a human or you just don't care, if you're an orc, grab the Tosh Trainer's War Axe. You're going to be doing Oculus anyway, so you're probably going to see this weapon too. That's just how I feel. But yeah, the weapons are really easy. Um, one thing I'll touch on is, you know, the difference between two-handed and dual wielding is, again, it just goes back to which bosses parry haste and which bosses don't. If there's a boss that parry haste, like, for example, if Patchwork is, you know, found out to be a parry haster, you definitely want to use a two-hander while tanking him. If he's not a parry haster, you can dual wield. But that's just really what it comes down to. If, depending on which bosses have parry haste, determines if you want to dual wield or if you want to two-hand tank him. But that's really it. Moving on down, the last slot we have is the relics. And there's two you're gonna get. Well, I'm gonna get, and I would recommend that you get. The first one is the sigil, the sigil of Unfaltering Knight that just costs 15 emblems of heroism. Pretty easy buy. Causes you to get 53 defense when you use Icy Touch. Easy. The next one is the sigil of Frozen Conscience. This comes from uh, Venture Coins and Grizzly Hills, but it increases the damage of your Icy Touch by 111. Like I said, my goal, I'm gonna have both of these. That's really what's gonna happen. I'm gonna have both of these. Um, the Sigil of Haunted Dreams costs 30 emblems and it's trash. Um, if you, <laughs> there's no way you, you you skip the Unfaltering Knight Sigil to go buy this one, right? Like, so you're gonna have this one first. However, if you don't wanna get these 30 Venture Coins and you wanna get this, sure, I guess. Um, it increases, it has a chance to increase your Critical Strike rating by 173. Um, I just think by and large the frozen conscious one is better just for a little bit of extra work um, to be honest that's just how I feel about it but yeah I'm my goal I'm gonna have both of these that's my goal for my sigils so there you have it that's all of the slots you know for pre-raid bis um, like I said before in the beginning of the video as I scroll up if you just want to outline yourself and just get each bis or each best listed item no one's gonna say anything like you could have each best item and that'd be the end of that you'll be all ready to take anything in phase one like i said before i just think that it's like these items required a little bit of nuance so i just wanted to make some talking points about them and yeah that was really it so if you enjoyed the video and you're still here with me i know this is a long one i tried not to drag it i apologize but if you are still here and you enjoyed the video please consider liking and subscribing if you want to see more content from me it helps the channel grow greatly but with that being said you guys know the deal you've been great i've been soul and i'm out peace